Do you want to find some amazing hidden weapons and items that are both unique and powerful in Dragon's Dogma 2? Well, here are some items that will hopefully make your playthrough much, much more fun. A few of these will make your character fairly busted or your pawn, so you don't want to miss out on them. You can even grab many of these super early in the game, as most of the map is accessible from the very beginning if you know the secret routes to take. So here we've wrapped together a bunch of stuff for your character or your pawn so you can get kitted out. But speaking of pawns, what is your best or most funny pawn moments so far that you've encountered? Tell us down below in the comments. Let's start in Vernsworth as there's a ton of awesome goodies and secrets to find like the silver rapier in the bell tower and the throat cutter daggers but also there's a vault that is packed with a bunch of gear. To get there it will require a bit of work and you will need to have a key to access it which you get from completing a quest in the ancient battlegrounds. So head to this location on the map and there should be an NPC there for you to rescue and escort into the castle area of the ancient battlegrounds. He will want to get to the cenotaph and once you're there you'll be able to loot a chest in the right corner of the room that will net you this makeshift vault key. But before we grab the juicy stuff in the vault, there's a really good weapon for the Mystic Spearhand quite close by while you're in this ancient battlegrounds area. It will give you a chonky damage boost, but also a permanent fire enchantment, letting you deal that nice elemental damage considering a lot of enemies are weak to fire. All you need to do is use the key on the door nearby that is covered in boxes, and there'll be two chests inside, and one of them will have the infernal edges, which not only looks cool, but is also a great upgrade. Next up, since we're in this area anyway, you want to head to this location at night time and you'll be able to get the Kraos Trine Staff. This is another weapon that grants a fire enchantment on your attacks, which again is really good. You will need to go here at night time and fight a white that will spawn to get this, and it seems like it is a drop chance thing, so it might take a few times to farm this, but for our runs and a majority of people online, many people are getting it on their very first try. If you don't manage to get it the first time, you can respawn it by resting for a few days and then coming back. Do note, if you're having trouble with this method of getting it to respawn, you can always go back to the main menu screen and load back in after resting and this seems to help things respawn. After this we're now ready to head to the vault so let's head back to Vernsworth. Go to the castle area and follow this path as we will be going up the stairs towards the main path and then go to the left so that we can head through this archway that leads to the garden and this is where we need to bear left again after going through that archway. Head through into this side door where you will find the kitchen. From here we're actually very close and you want to go through the kitchen into the corridor and follow the corridor down the stairs until you get to this new door that requires the makeshift key. There is sometimes a guard outside the door that will need to be distracted to get in. But for us, that wasn't a problem and he wasn't there, so hopefully he won't be there for you. But if that does happen, just use the barrel nearby and throw it to distract him. Once inside, you will get a bunch of items like the Worm Hunter's Cloak as well as 20k gold, but the real prize is a shield for the fighter called the Daughter of the Evening, which for the fighter class is very effective, especially if you get it early on. Next up is one for the fashion dogma and cosplayer fans out there, it's the Greatsword Life Taker. This is one of the closest looking representations of the Guts character's weapon from Berserk or the iconic Buster Sword from Final Fantasy VII. It actually doesn't take too long to grab this one, just head to the collapsed mine here on the map, which is in the Vermund area, and just outside of it, if you head up the path here, there'll be a ledge that is a little too high for you to climb on, but luckily there are actually boxes nearby. So, grab one of the boxes, place it down, stand on it, and this will allow you to get up onto the ledge, break the door down, and then loot the box inside with this sword. There's also a cape that you should grab located nearby in this section of the cave, but you will need to break a rock in order to find it, and it's located here on the map. From here there's another armor piece that you may as well pick up while you're here which is super close by. So head to this abandoned village here and in this house will be an oxhide hood which is a great item to be worn for fighters, warriors and a thief making you look quite menacing. We really wish this game had a transmog system so you could wear any armor piece without having to worry too much about the stats because there are some really cool looking ones. Personally I think the mystic spearhand has some of the best looking stuff but what do you think? You've no doubt already quickly learnt that port crystals are extremely useful in Dragon's Dogma 2 as they allow you to fast travel to a specific spot where you place them, but they are also very rare. So when you have a chance to grab a new one, you should get it straight away. Luckily, there is one in Vermund that shouldn't take too much work to get. To find it, you need to locate this griffin's nest in the Misty Marches, which is located here on the map. 
There's an easy way to get on it if you ride a griffin anywhere in this area, it will take you back to the nest. But if you don't have time to wait for your free taxi ride, then just go to the Misty Marshes entrance which is located here, and then follow the path for a bit and go to the southeast of the marshes until you get to this climbable side. For us there was a griffin that we actually had to defeat afterwards, but then there was a ton of loot to collect including the super rare port crystal and even a fairy stone. Talking about griffins, there's also a bow for the archer class called the Darkening Storm, which is a hidden item in the open world. This bow is amazing because it specializes in taking down griffins. If you've been farming, you'll be very familiar with this area, and what we're looking for is this spot which is near the checkpoint rest town. Next to the camp, there will be a chest with this bow inside of it. So to get here, you'll need to follow a path down from the checkpoint rest town, and then head up the river until you find a cave. Once inside of the cave, climb up to the side on the right, and this will eventually lead you to the camp that will have the bow here as well. If you haven't visited this area before, then we suggest heading up the pathway to the misty area, where there will be several monsters that you can slay to get a ton of XP and extra fairy stones. The next one on the list is actually close by the checkpoint rest town once again, and this is one of the cooler looking weapons. If you want some daggers that have lightning on them, which is good for things like hobgoblins and other things weak to lightning, then head over here to the wind-worn gully cave, which is where this weapon is found. You've probably passed this one a few times on your adventures because the path up to it is easily missed, but all you need to do is walk up to this broken bridge and jump across these sections until you get to the ledge, and then follow around the edge when you jump off this side with the cave on it, which allows you to climb up and into the cave. If you follow the path, you'll come across a ledge that has a chest on it, which will include the blue daggers and an elite camping kit. But be warned, a ton of enemies will spawn after you pick it up, so get ready for a fight. Next up, we're going to head over to Batal to get some more hidden goodies. There's a number of goodies in a hidden hideout that you need to do a quest to access, but luckily, the quest is actually quite short and isn't very hard at all. To start with, you need to complete the Feast of Deception main quest from Brant in Vernsworth, then take the ox cart to the checkpoint rest town and go through the border gate, which you will need a Beastron headpiece and the permit that you gained from that quest we just mentioned. After you go through, go forwards and talk with the starving kid Tommy and give him some food a couple of times. After this, there'll be a short chat and then talk to the soldiers towards the gate to get the Mercy Among Thieves quest. Just next to the soldiers, in front of a stable, there's an NPC called Lissandro and you need to talk to him. After this, you can then head over to the Coral Snakes hideout cave here on the map. Once you get here, the bandits will run away and actually open the gate for you to get inside. Simply go inside and follow the kid as he runs away and chase him throughout this area. First, you will find the Ring of Disfavor in this cave, which is about halfway through chasing him, and this one is great because it will draw aggro to either yourself or your pawn based on who has it equipped, so if you have a fighter or warrior pawn, this ring is going to be quite good. Simply continue and kill all of the bandits in the cave until you find the Decapitator's Hood, which is located here on the map. But if you keep following the kid around the corner, complete the quest, and then you will find the amazing Frosted Edges in this chest here. We absolutely love these daggers, especially for you use on a thief pawn because their attacks will quickly freeze any enemies during a fight, making it super easy. And next we have some extremely useful items for a sorcerer or even a mage. The Visage of Janua is a really cool helmet for the sorcerer and the Ring of Recitation is amazing for the mage or sorcerer as it greatly increases your encant speed. This one might be a bit hard if you are super early on in the game, but again it's fantastic for spell casters. All you need to do is travel here on the map to this cave, the Tomb of Janua. Inside of here will be an interesting mob which is a skeleton lord. It's a bit hard to kill so will require some patience as you whittle it down. After defeating it though, it will drop the helmet for you to grab for your sorcerer, and if you go to this nearby wall and break it open, which you can just attack it or throw a barrel at it, you will reveal a chest which has the ring in it, which gives you around a 15-20% to cast speed bonus on your major sorcerer, which is really, really good. From here, if you head south of the Batal area, you'll be able to find a place called the Dragon's Breath Tower, and this place is stacked with powerful items, but it is quite tough, so be ready for a fight. The Frigid Finger is one of these powerful items, that is a staff for mages but has a permanent ice enchantment on it and you can find it here in a chest on the map. Also in this area, you will find the beastly dragon's shield called Dragon's Faith, which pretty much every fighter will benefit from. You can find it here on the map so it isn't too hard to get to and it makes you look like an absolute boss. These next items are located on the volcanic island in a cave called the Mountain Base Cave. 
On the second floor of the cave here, you will find a hammer for warriors that has a 150% fire damage element on it, which is absolutely nuts. To get it, you need to jump across here and you will see one of the special chests on a ledge with this weapon in it. Then if you go to the bottom floor of the cave, you will find a big room with a couple of chests in it. And in one of them is the Molten Fury, which is like the Cinder Spine, but for the fighter class, along with a Wakestone Shard and some gold. You could also get some really cool items by visiting the vendor in the Sacred Arbor, as they sell a ton of cool things, including things that aren't always available in other areas. For example, you can get this amazing lightning staff or this ice elemental magic bow, which are really awesome. So there you have it, a bunch of awesome items that you can grab, you just need to know where to go. We hope this helped you out and comment below if you have any amazing items that you've found that you don't see anyone talking about. And subscribe for more Dragon's Dogma 2 coming your way very soon.